Hi everyone, this lesson is on pseudofolliculitis barbae, which is simply a medical term for shaving bums. So we're going to talk about what causes shaving bumps, some risk factors for getting them, and we'll also talk about treatments for helping to resolve them. So again, this condition is known as pseudofolliculitis barbae, and it's also referred to as pseudofolliculitis of the beard. That's another term for this condition. It is considered an irritant folliculitis condition, often affecting the chin, jaw, or neck area after shaving. So we call it pseudofolliculitis because it's not what we would term as a folliculitis condition itself, because oftentimes when we refer to folliculitis, we're talking about infectious causes like bacterial folliculitis or hot tub folliculitis is a particular condition we can see. So it's going to be considered pseudofolliculitis, and folliculitis simply means inflammation of a hair follicle. Follicle refers to a hair follicle, and itis refers to inflammation. So that's why we call it pseudofolliculitis, and we call it Barbe, pseudoflick is barbe because it refers to the beard. We can see this more clearly as to why we use the word barbe if we were to look at some of the Romance languages like French and Spanish. In French, the word for beard is umbalbe, and in Spanish, it is barba. So this is where we get the term barbe that refers to beard. If we have pseudofliculitis, in the pubic area, if we were to shave pubic hair, for instance, this can lead to a condition known as pseudofolliculitis pubis. That is a separate but similar condition, again, due to shaving. So it'd be shaving bumps in the pubic area. So this condition is going to be a very, very common condition. We're not going to have the epidemiological data for this condition because it's not going to be always brought up to healthcare providers. It is going to be something that occurs more commonly in certain patient populations, especially those with curly hair. And we'll see why this is when we talk about some of the pathophysiology behind why this condition occurs. And more specifically, it's going to occur more commonly in patients of African descent. So because of coarseness and curliness of their hair, individuals of African descent are going to be at a very high risk for having pseudofolliculitis barbae. And in fact, it can affect anywhere from 10 to 80% of African descent males that closely shave regularly. So this is going to be a something that occurs very, very frequently in that particular patient demographic. Now let's discuss some of the pathophysiology behind why this condition occurs. So there are two different ways this can occur. First is through what we would call extra follicular penetration. So this is where there is a shortened, sharp hair follicle that grows out from the skin and re-enters the skin a short distance away. So if we were to look at this image here, there's a hair follicle. If we've got a hair follicle penetrating through the skin. If we were to cut that hair follicle too short, in some cases that hair follicle, especially if it's a curly hair follicle, it can twist back in on itself and penetrate back into the skin. This can lead to a little bit of inflammation, a little bump that we call a shaving bump or pseudofolliculitis barbae. And another way that this condition can occur is through what we would call transfollicular penetration. So this is where a sharp tip of a growing hair follicle pierces through the follicular wall. So if we were to look at this image here again, if we were to continually cut the hair follicle shorter and shorter, we may have a, cut it so short, in fact, that the end of the hair follicle becomes sharp, and instead of it growing out through the skin, it actually grows into the skin. It actually penetrates through the follicular wall into underlying skin, causing inflammation as well. This is more likely going to occur especially in those with close shaving methods. So both of these can occur either through simply shaving or especially close shaving methods. And what are some of those close shaving methods? Some of these include the following methods of shaving. So one would be to shave in the opposite direction of hair follicle growth. So if the hair follicles are growing in one direction, if you were to shave against the grain of the hair follicles, you're more likely to get a closer shave. It'll feel smoother on the skin, but what can happen is you can shave so low that that end of the hair follicle can essentially be inside the skin and can penetrate through the follicular wall, causing inflammation. If you were to pull the skin taut, so if you were to pull the skin and then shave, that's another way to cause too close of a shave. Plucking the hair follicle is another way. So if you're to actually pluck it, part of it may break off. And again, that part can, or that end can regrow and penetrate through the follicular wall. And then electrolysis removal of the hair can also lead to this as well. 
So those are some of the close shaving methods that can lead to pseudofolliculitis barbae, especially the transfollicular penetration. Now let's talk about some of the presentation of pseudofolliculitis barbae and some of the potential consequences of having it. So again, it's going to occur on the neck, chin, or jawline. It can look something like this. So it can look like papules. Papules are going to be raised skin lesions, usually defined as less than 10 millimeters in diameter, or it can be a pustule, which is a raised skin lesion with pus. So it's a pus-filled skin lesion. In some cases, they can be flesh-colored, so they can simply appear like the surrounding skin in, in its tone. Or they can be erythematous, they can be reddened in appearance, or they can be darkened in appearance. And they can be what we would describe as acneiform. They can appear like acne in some patients. Some patients can have these feeling painful. They can be a bit tender or painful. And if you were to look very closely, and a lot of times you may not see it, but the hair follicle resides in the center of each of these particular little skin lesions. Now, there are particular consequences for having shaving bumps, especially if you were to have them very frequently for very, very long periods of time. Some of these include scarring. So you can have a keloid scar. Keloid scar is going to be where the scar tissue is very thickened. It overgrows past the original borders of the wound or lesion. And this is, again, going to be more common in darker skinned individuals. So because pseudofolliculitis barbae is going to occur more frequently in African descent male patients or any patient who does shave, for instance, and those patients are at a higher risk for having keloid scar formation, this is something to look out for and this is something that we want to avoid. Post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation is something that can occur as well. So after the little skin lesions have been inflamed, they may be erythematous, so they're reddened in appearance. After they've healed, there can be some darkening of the skin. And that would be what we would call post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So those residual lesions are darker than the surrounding skin. That's something that can occur in some patients with pseudofolliculitis barbae. And then finally, we may see secondary infections occurring in some patients. So because those hair follicles can become inflamed, they become blocked, and bacteria and other microorganisms can reside in those hair follicles. And if those hair follicles are blocked, there can be a secondary infection that occurs. So these patients can also have pustules. So we talked about pustules being something that can occur in non-infected patients, but in infected patients, we may also see pustules that are larger or more reddened, sore, more painful. And we can also see abscesses as well. So abscesses would be something like this. It would be a growing collection of essentially pus within the skin and that can be a very large reddened very sore tender enlargement on the skin again due to a secondary infection that may occur in some patients with this condition so how do we diagnose pseudofolliculitis barbae this is going to be a clinical diagnosis if we were to see those particular skin bumps in a region where a patient might shave, that would be enough to make the diagnosis. It's important to look out for other potential infections though, because coccidioides imidis infection can mimic pseudofolliculitis barbae as well. So we may think it is a pseudofolliculitis barbae condition, but it might actually be a coccidioides imidis infection. So it's something to think about. The treatment of this condition is as follows. You want to stop shaving for three to four weeks. You want to allow those blocked occluded hair follicles to resolve on their own and you also want to prevent causing more of them. You also want to prevent in the future any close shaving. So try not to do close shaving. We can also use something called chemical depilatories or depilatories once every two to three days. These include 2% barium sulfide powder paste for three to five minutes. So it's a paste that you put on your face or calcium thioglycolate for 10 to 15 minutes. Some topical treatments can include the following, tretinoin or Retin-A, Triluma. This is a combination of tretinoin and a topical corticosteroid and corticosteroids as well. And another possible treatment is something called eflornithine. Now, in more severe cases, we may use antibiotics, including erythromycin, benzoyl peroxide, and tetracycline. Some of these can be used in topical formulation. So these would be more likely to be used in refractory cases. We may start off with some of these other treatments first. If they don't work, we move on to higher and higher potency treatments, for instance. So we might use antibiotics later if some of these other ones haven't worked at first. That would be how we would treat this. 
please also check out my lesson on flicculitis and see the differences between flicculitis and pseudofliculitis barbae. So that would be also helpful. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.